what's up, people? So we are uh, high in the sky this morning. Beautiful day. Got some, uh, some clouds in the distance. But we should be good for quite some time. But I wanted to address a couple of points that I may have missed on my other review. And I've uh, got a couple of questions from some people. So we'll see if we can't um, shed some light on some of the mysteries of the virus paramotor. So where the heck do you get a virus paramotor? I can't tell you how many times I've heard that question already. And for the second time in the video, I forgot to put my hand strap on. All right. So yeah, where do you get a virus paramotor? Well, there currently isn't a U.S. distributor that I'm aware of. The few people that have bought them in the U.S. ordered them directly from Jivko Matev in Bulgaria. And the way you do that is you go to the Virus PPG website and there is a contact form. You fill out that contact form and Jivko will get in touch with you. So, how long does it take to get a virus power motor? I'd say the better part of six to eight weeks is what you're looking at. Uh, assuming he's got some frames assembled uh, and ready to go, they have to be shipped from Bulgaria. So, what that means is uh, coming across the pod, customs, importing, the whole nine yards. So there's, uh, there's a bit of a delay to, to handle all of that. So, is there a big factory in uh, Bulgaria pumping these things out? As far as I understand, uh, Jeepro is the owner, the designer, the engineer. He is the man. He is the CNC machine expert. He's the one uh, with the dream to put this together and made it happen. Uh, does he have help? I hope he does. <laughs> But I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I've talked to him a couple of times on Facebook Messenger. Like I said in earlier videos, uh, he's very easy to talk with. Super cool. But it's a little slow because he has to translate. But uh, fantastic guy. And I don't think you could uh, you could go wrong you know, getting in touch with him. So uh, second question I got multiple times is, what does a virus PPG cost? Well, I think you'll be happy to hear that they're uh, in the 7K range once you get it imported to the U.S. with taxes and everything paid. Uh, actually, it's a little bit below 7K. But again, I'm not in charge of pricing, so could that change? Yeah, of course. So my experience was just that, and uh, hopefully you can have a very similar experience if you'd like to order one. Hybrid swing arms, the 
uh, torque effect is significantly magnified because you've got all this flex here in the triangle where your carabiner attaches. So the ATLs are a really big deal on this machine and they make it very manageable. Also, the weight shiftability of this machine, you saw that I, I crossed my legs when I went to full power and I'll do another, do another demo here. So this is with my legs straight. your carabiner sat. Who knows? I'm not an engineer and I am certainly not a paramotor expert. But I sure like flying them and I like talking about them. So um, another thing that didn't come uh, very clearly in the video was the uh, fuel tank. Today I took off in absolutely one mile of wind. Matter of fact, we're gonna go fly over the LZ so you can see my streamer. I flew over, I, I took off at about one mile an hour of wind. I had a, an audience, a bicyclist came up to watch me, which was the first audience that I've had on the virus. And uh, I pulled off a, a practically no wind launch with a 100% full fuel tank, my uh, big ass reserve, and tools in the pockets without any problem. Matter of fact, I think uh, I think I ran less than 40 steps. It was really, really nice. Uh, the wing that I'm flying is a, a Dudek Hadron 1.1. Uh, the 1.1 is supposedly a revamped version of the original Hadron. What does revamp mean? Honestly, I'm not exactly sure. I believe they took uh, the popular sizes and the popular colors, and that's what they started with. And then they made a couple of tweaks, perhaps to the fabric, to make it a little bit lighter. Because from what I understand, the old Hadron didn't come up as smoothly as this one does. Uh, it took a lot more effort. So this wing is 100% reflex. 100% of the time, even with the trims all the way in. Uh, so this wing requires a little bit of a heavy pull on the toggles to get it to do what you want it to do. Uh, it basically feels like you've got your trims out and you're trying to pull brake. Maybe not that hard, but that's the feeling you get. So we're coming up on my LZ.
my body around. So I've got two hands, one on the throttle and one holding the camera. And if I set my cruise control, I can basically put the throttle down as well. And I can have two hands free. And uh, I think that is an absolute win for this machine. So let's, let's try that. I haven't, I haven't done that yet, so bear with me as I set my cruise control. I gotta need two hands. Set the cruise. I'm, uh, I'm gonna keep the throttle in my hand just to, just in case. But I'm not gonna touch the trigger. And if I was to stow this throttle, I would have two free hands to just do what I needed to do. And I think that is absolutely awesome.
that doesn't have at least electric start. Uh, I think the dual start feature to have that backup full starter is, is great. I'm sure it adds a little bit of weight, but again, I'm not concerned about the weight. Um, this machine, I think it carries its weight really well. And the, uh, the Moster 185 really pushes this thing in the air fantastic. in the uh, earlier days when 
didn't have their shop at the airport and uh, they were working out of uh, the local park and a building in downtown uh, and they were I would say just just kind of getting the ball rolling with their business and I had a fantastic experience with them they're the, uh, the most humble people you ever want to meet uh, their customer service and the way they serve the BPT community is, is really as intense as you could possibly be. As you could possibly be. And I'm not just saying that. Um, they're just amazing people. They want to see you succeed. They want to grow the sport. They want to. They want to help you realize the dream of flight. Uh, they give back to the community. They work with uh, war veterans. They've worked with all kinds of charities. I, I just think they're just an all-around fantastic group of people. Um, their training program is, uh, you know, certified training through the USPPA. Uh, you, so you can get your ratings there. Um, they're working out of the airport, so they've got a dedicated field to train at. They've got a really great uh, training classroom. So they've uh, really come a long way in the last few years, and I would highly recommend them. So if you're looking to, to get into PPG, yes, it's an, it's an unregulated sport to a certain extent. You could train yourself, but I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, we're talking about your, your life here. You really want to do it safely. You really want to know what's going on. You don't want to rely on videos to teach you what's going on. I think the YouTube stuff is fantastic, but I think the place for the YouTube videos is after you've been trained and when you're looking to refine your skills. Go we'll have a little fun. Not to learn. So that's, that's my opinion. So there's a, there's a some other schools that are out there. There's another school in um, Zephyr Hills, cloud-based PPG. That's run by a friend of mine. You can contact them as well. Lots of options. So uh, take the first step and spend, spend some money and get trained the right way with, with some safe gear. And don't rely on friends, yourself, or uh, YouTube to teach you how to fly. You want to be able to enjoy the sport for a long time.